Hi again guys, it's FD465.tv here. Uh, another video for our Patreon viewers. If there are any people who are viewing our content on a regular basis. Again, I don't know if we have to do that for more housekeeping stuff, not financial advice. Please seek someone who can give you financial advice. And if you're from the UK, this video is not intended for you and all that stuff. Please, you don't research. Okay, so today I thought I would share with you guys my views and possibly give you an insight into some of my holdings into one of my top layer one projects. So it is like an ecosystem and I just want to share what I think about that ecosystem and what I hold. Let's forget about Ethereum killers and let's just focus on alternative layer ones here that are functional and efficient. And like I said, Avalanche is one of my favorites as well. The Avalanche blockchain is designed differently. There are three blockchains, in fact, and they are inherent to the Avalanche network. And those are you've got the platform chain or P chain, exchange chain or X chain, and the contracts chain or C chain. The P chain is the main metadata chain which coordinates validators and keeps track of activity. It is. While the X chain is the exchange chain which acts as a decentralized platform for creating new assets, exchanging and trading of digital assets and cross-chain subnet transfers. So if you are swapping things on Trader Joe or Panglin, you are most likely using the X chain. While the C chain is the contract chain, which is the default smart control chain on Avalanche, which enables the creation of any Ethereum compatible smart contracts. So those are the three blockchains that make up the Avalanche network. Avalanche enables the launching of decentralized applications and enterprise blockchain services. With Avalanche, developers can create new custom blockchains called subnets. I think most of you know that. And subnets rely on a subset of Avalanche's existing validator set for network security. Subnets are sovereign networks within the Avalanche ecosystem, each with its own tokenomics, roles, and validators. Each subnet is independent of the others. And the Avalanche primary network, especially subnet consisting of the P-chain, X-chain, and C-chain. Furthermore, each subnet can establish its own regulatory compliance measures, such as KYC or AML checks or the requirement to be located within a certain jurisdiction. While I have some exposure to the Avalanche native coin, which is AVAX, my bigger plays are actually in the Avalanche ecosystem project themselves. And in this video, I'm going to reveal which ones. For those who follow us every week, you may already have a clue as to which ones I hold in my private portfolio, as well as those we hold in our public portfolios, which we share with you guys week in, week out. Now, let's start with the obvious ones. You got AVAX, yes, I do hold the AVAX coin within my private portfolio. It is not a significant amount, just enough for decent exposure. This is also complemented by what we hold within the 2K and 100K portfolio challenge. Next is the biggest X on the Avalanche blockchain, which is Trader Joe. Now, I held the Joe token during the last cycle and I sold approximately 90% of it and it had the misery of watching the remaining 10% go all the way down by about 90%. Not a pretty sight, I can tell you. Anyway, Trader Joe has most things going for it. For example, the tokenomics, the maximum token, token supply and the products on offer. Even the user interface just works, which does not do any harm to the user experience at all. My Trader Joe position is actually larger than my AVAX position within my private portfolio. And if you would like to know where I think the Joe token will get price-wise at the top of this current cycle, then please watch our previous video on price prediction. I'll leave some links in the description for you guys to watch those videos if you haven't done so already. It is also worth noting that we also feature the Joe token in both the 2K to 100 k portfolio challenge as well as the 15k to 600k crypto portfolio challenge next on the list is another dex on avalanche and this one is panglin and this png token this one is a small portion of my avalanche bag and i don't see that changing anytime soon next we have bim formerly married circle which is a gaming project that is moved to avalanche as a subnet as with others featured in this video i do hold bim within my private portfolio and this one also features within the 15k to 600k crypto public portfolio that we share with our community every week. I have high expectations for this one and will not be surprised to see this one actually grow into possibly the largest bag I hold within the Avalanche ecosystem. That's how much faith I have in BIM. But time will be the judge of that. We then have Banky, which is a DeFi and Web3 protocol that offers lending, borrowing, and liquid staking services and boasts well over 80,000 users. Users can stake AVAX and earn within the DeFi ecosystem. The platform also allows users to lend, borrow, and earn with various cryptocurrencies. I held this one during the last bull run, managed to exit just before the exact top, but still made some money. I actually stake some of my AVAX on the bank platform. This is probably the fourth largest position I hold within the AVAX ecosystem. Next is Avalanche, which is the launch part. And I do hold this within my private portfolio as well. And we also feature this within the 15k to 600k crypto portfolio challenge. To date, I've participated in one of the ideals on the Avalanche platform. It is so seamless to use and less of a hassle. It is actually easy to use than say CD5. That's my own 
experience, of course. Next, I got Shrapnel, a first shooter game on the Avalanche blockchain. This gaming project on Avalanche features in our 15k to 600k crypto portfolio challenge, and I also hold it within my private portfolio. I think I'll keep adding to my private portfolio bag as long as the price stays under 50 cents. I think it will do well. I don't know what you think. Do you hold Shrapnel? Let us know in the comment section. And finally, I hold Melt, which I first accumulated over at Cardano, but not sure whether it will be a dual project or will completely move to Avalanche. It is a small bag though, not something significant. I just thought I'll throw it in. So that's it then. Those are some of my Avalanche positions that are worth sharing with you guys. Some are hold in my private portfolio while others appear in both our public portfolios, which is the 15k to 600k crypto public portfolio and the 2k to 100k crypto public portfolio. Anyway, over to you then. What do you think about the positions I hold in my private portfolio? Yes, I haven't given you the actual numbers or percentages, but I just gave you the projects I do hold in my private portfolio. What do you guys think? Let me know what your thoughts are as far as my positions are concerned. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next one, guys, see you later.